I've created this cute little birdhouse that I want to share with you today. This birdhouse has some secrets inside. The roof is a mini journal and it has lots of space for ephemera storage inside. You can open it completely and keep your favorite memories inside. In this video, I will show you step by step how you can create your own birdhouse like this. Hi, this is Luisa Heinzel and this is my design team project for this month for 49 Dragonflies. To get a really sturdy base for our birdhouse, I've decided to cut some pieces from old book covers. You can see my measurements that I've used for this birdhouse here in the screen in centimeter. But of course you can also figure out your own proportions and you can do what you like, of course. Um, I have one square, as you can see, and four rectangles that are cut out of this book cover material. And in the first step, I'm placing my square to the middle of this grid mat so that I can see that everything is lined up really, really good. And now I'm beginning to glue those rectangles to the square. I'm using this tape that you can spritz with water and then it sticks. But of course you can use any other tape or even fabric would work. I can't recommend to glue that with scrapbooking paper or something like that because that would make it not really durable, I would say. So um, for gluing these pieces, please make sure that you have a little distance between those uh, rectangled pieces and the square in the middle. You can do it exactly in the same way like you would glue together the pieces of a book cover. If you want to make a junk journal, you would um, glue those pieces together in a similar way and leave this little space in between of the single pieces so that you can make sure that you can um, lift the sides up and that they move really, really easily. Make sure that you put the tape to the back side as well to make it even more sturdy. These black pieces here are some pieces of um, scrapbooking paper. I've just used two layers of scrapbooking paper for each of those pieces and we will need four of those pieces now. These have the same uh, size like the rectangles that we've glued before. And now we are gluing these so that we can flip that like this so that um, every side of this house is uh, has a double layer. So um, I had to figure that out, <laughs> to be honest. In the beginning, I was not sure how that will work because I wanted to have something that can stand by itself. So in a second, I will add some magnets to make sure that this little box that is the base for the birdhouse can stand by itself. Perhaps you know those explosion boxes that those really awesome card makers make. Um, there they don't have those black pieces and the box is yeah exploding when you open it. But I wanted to have it hmm, that, how can I explain that, that the space is a box by itself and that it doesn't fall apart um, when you lift up the roof. In a few minutes that will make sense to you. Please believe me. <laughs> Please wait a little bit. So the whole thing looks like this now so that you can lift the sides and then you can close every side like this and that this can hold there and that it can't um, open by itself. I'm adding some magnets now. So I'm adding those to the short side of each black piece and it's that side where not the tape is. I'm using some gel medium to place the magnets where I want them. Um, so I'm doing that on each of these black pieces here, as you can see. So that we now have eight magnets here, 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 and here, <clears throat> and here, and here, and here, and here, just on the outer sides of this black pieces. To make sure that those magnets that I've just attached stay in place and to find the position for the opposite magnets, I've covered them up with some washi tape. I can't recommend that. 
please use a tape that sticks better than washi tape. And then just put um, a second magnet to each of the first magnets and put a little bit of ink or something like that to the top magnet so that you can find the position for the other one really, really easily. So um, I'm just flipping this black thing around the corner then I'm pressing both pieces together so that I get this little mark to this book cover piece. And that's the position where I want to place the other both magnets so that this thing later on here and here can close and stays closed. So I'm using some gel medium to glue the other magnets as well. Um, exactly there where this black ink from the pen is. And um, then I let everything dry. So I think that this is the most time consuming step for this base. And I can only recommend take your time to do this and take a really, really strong tape to cover those magnets up. Um, if you use washi tape like I have used here, it will kill your nerves because the magnets can be so strong that they lift the tape when you try to open and close this while the glue is not totally dry. But you have to try that out and you have to open and close it because you want to know if this um, mechanism is working, of course, and if the magnets are um, in the right position. So please take a strong tape and take some time. <laughs> <laughs> that was really really hard for me and um, please also make sure that the box is really a box do you know what I mean that those angles of the sides are really 90 degree and that everything looks nice and harmonious so um, since this is a design team project for 49 dragonflies I'm covering all of those pieces up with Barbara's papers. You can find a list of the sets from her shop that I've used for this project down below in the description box of this video. So just uh, after watching, go to the description box there you can find um, all of the links. And there you can also find a promo code to save 10% um, of your purchase in her shop. So she gave me this coupon. Uh, for you. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I think 10% discount is a really good deal. So if you want to imitate this birdhouse project exactly like I'm doing it here, then you can find exactly the papers that I've used down below in the description box. So um, I'm not a card maker and <laughs> perhaps you can already see that here. Um, I guess that my steps here are not so logical, I would say. So um, I've not measured anything in this step because I knew the measurements of my uh, pieces that I've just glued together. But of course, you need um, those papers that you want to glue down here a little bit smaller than the pieces of this box because you want to have the box, yeah, in a way that it can open and close really, really easily. And you don't want to have paper in this little slot between the single uh, pieces of the book cover material and the scrapbooking paper. So please make sure that all of those papers that you glue down in this step are a little bit smaller. And please don't distress every piece like I'm doing it here. That was totally stupid. I haven't thought about that. Um, you can distress everything later in one step. I will show you that in a second. I haven't realized that while I have done this here because yeah, I guess I was so proud of myself that I found this idea <laughs> and the base for the book for this box worked. So that I was in this flow I wanted to go on and I haven't realized that it is totally stupid to <laughs> to distress every of these uh, pieces of paper. Um, yeah, by the way, for distressing, I'm using some distress oxide ink. Um, the color is walnut stain, but of course you can also use vintage photo or ground espresso or something like that. That would uh, all of the three would work really well with Barbara's papers. 
Um, and here I've also used some gel medium to glue that down because uh, then it gets really, really flat without any air bubbles or something like that. And um, I can uh, dry that with my heat gun. And uh, yeah, it's relatively easy to glue, I would say. After I have covered the the other side of this whole thing as well, I came to the idea that I now can do my distressing. As you can see, I've just taken this little sponge or, or this brush thingy. It's not a sponge, sorry. And I've just went over those areas where I wanted to have it a little bit distressed and a little bit more vintage. So, of course, that's the time-saving way to distress this box. <laughs> okay, so now it looks like this. And then I realized that those rusty papers that I've uh, chosen from Barbara's shop are not the colors that I want to have for this project. I couldn't imagine that before I've started, I will change that in a second. But while I have thought about that, I've um, covered the inside of a little book with Barbara's papers as well. And this book is a little bit bigger than those sides of my box you will see that later um, and this is also a trick how you can find the right um, size for your box if you have a book for the roof and you want to make the mini journal out of that then you can take that book and find the measurements for the box um, with this book measurements as your starting point hopefully that makes sense so the pages of this book have to go inside of the box. That means you have to cut them um, that they go really, really easily in and out there like this. So I've just cut one page and then I've tried that out and then I've cut all of the other pages. Um, and I've also imitated some rust for my pages with some sprays and distress oxide inks and that stuff because I thought that that would fit really well to Barbara's rusty papers that I've used here. Um, and I wanted to have this roof and this journal. Um, I mean, what is that? Is that a roof or is it a journal? <laughs> it's both, I think. I wanted to have that really outstanding and really rusty and really, you know, this kind of special mini journal. And I've put many, many pages in this journal so that it already is really, really bulky, as you can see. There are two signatures inside and it pops open, as you can see. It's still a journal, but it has to be a little bit puffy, I would say. Is that the right word? Hopefully. So um, that you can place it on top of the box and that the pages are, yeah... Uh, hopping apart from each other like this do you know what i mean so that it looks really really beautiful when you look um through this little triangle that you can see there and now we have to make something that the book can't fall off from the box so i've just cut two of those smaller strips here also from a book cover and i've glued them with approximately one centimeter distance to the inside of my cover so this is a little stopper I would say um, to hold the roof on top of this box so um, when you glue that there and you later on place the book on top of the box then it can't fall off um, it helps that it stays exactly in the place where you want it yeah so um, let that dry really really carefully and really good and um, while that dries I've decided that I want to put some new medium that I have in my stash. That's this crazing uh, medium by Ranger. Um, and this is uh, crackling, similar to crackle paste. But as you can see, this is transparent or translucent. Uh, I In this moment, I don't know what is the exactly right word, but you can see it's not white. Crackle paste is white and this uh, crazing medium is... Yeah, like broken glass in the end. You will see that in a second. So back to those sides of the box and back to the color. Barbara, I'm really, really sorry, but now I will cover up your wonderful rusty fabrics because, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to have this turquoise. 
I don't know what happened there, but um, there was this moment where I didn't like this orange anymore. Um, but of course, that's also a thing that you can do with digital paper. Just cover it up with something and you will have a beautiful thing in the end as well. So here I'm using some Distress Oxide ink and then I'm using some um, embossing glaze that is translucent and that gives me another color with the oxide ink in combination with the oxide ink and when that is embossed I can still see the texture of the fabric that Barbara has scanned for her papers in the camera sorry you can't see that really good but in reality it is really really cool I have, I still have the texture of the fabric of Barbara's papers, but I have it in another color. And I was really happy how that came out, even if I haven't, um, yeah, if I couldn't have those orange colors that she has put to the papers. But I think that looks really, really cool. And to get a more artsy look to the sides of this box, I've used some crayons. And I've, I've just scribbled over the glaze after that was dry. <clears throat> and then I've smeared that around with um, a little brush that is a little bit wet. And that way it looks really, really grungy and really cool. I want to make some uh, die cutting now. And for that I'm using, again, some... Uh, embossing glaze on top of some of the leftover pages of my mini journal. I've randomly put some embossing ink to those papers and then I've uh, <coughs> excuse me then I've put the glaze on top and some contrasting colors um, of oxide ink next to the glaze because you can't put ink to the glaze of course because the glaze is like plastic and no ink would stay on that. So here we have the cut piece and I'm so in love how that came out. That looks a little bit strange now, I know, <laughs> but I'm so happy it came out exactly like I wanted it to have the, the possibility to create a contrast to the outer side of this, yeah, turquoise, greenish, you know, thingy here. I wanted to have this red as a really, yeah, as a color that pops out. I've tried to uh, to imitate those colors on my uh, book cover as well. So this crazing medium was uh, has dried in the meantime. And to get a really intense color, I've used some oxide ink on top of this crazing medium. Um, I think that's not the normal way to use it, but it worked for me. So why not doing it if it works? So I think it's um, originally made to use some crayons on top but for me the oxide ink worked as well so i've let that dry and while that is drying i can decorate the inside of this box so i've tried to make some pockets and some belly bands and some possibilities to store ephemera um, also here please make sure that you um yeah flip the sides of your box uh, from time to time to make sure that everything can be closed really, really well in the end. Um, I had some, yeah, I would say trouble with my flow of creating this and at the same time thinking about the function of this box. <laughs> so, um, of course, you can customize this like you want. You can uh, do here what you want. You can put um, ephemera inside of this box you can um, put photos inside of the box you can put in there what you want um, for this middle part where this square is I've decided that I want to have something that's a little bit more bulky so I've made this little yeah what is that it's a little folder thingy where you can store some um pieces of paper for example or some photos or some loose ephemera this can be a little bit thicker. That could also be way more high than I've made it here because there's enough room inside of this box. Later on, you could also uh, put tiny decorative pieces inside of the box, of course. But on the sides, that means on all of those rectangles, you have to make sure 
that your decoration and your ephemera that you want to put inside of your storage possibilities is flat enough so that the box can still close. Um, so I've tried that out with every side that I've decorated. So after I have made, for example, a belly band and put something inside, I've closed the box and looked if that still can work and if the magnets are still strong enough to hold everything together. Um, if that is too thick, of course, the box wouldn't close anymore in the end. What I really, really enjoy about decorating the inside of such a box is that you can go really, really crazy with the things that you are doing there. You can go crazy with the mediums, with the materials that you use. You can create any style that you want on this yeah, relatively limited surface of the inside of this box. I mean, that's not a big space that you have there. And I really enjoy including also some mixed media techniques, if you will. So I've added some texture paste through a stencil and that gave me this little bit elegant look of the whole project. And I really like this um, gold and this shimmer inside of the box. Even if I don't have that... Um, you can't see that on the outside. So I have no gold, no texture paste like this on the outside of the whole birdhouse. And I wanted to have this BAM effect so that when you open it, it's a totally different look than on the outside, but it matches each other. And I think that worked relatively well here with the things that I've used. And of course, you can also think about all of the things that you have in your stash that you now can use here. I've included some die cuts as well. So those black birds that you can see there, there will come some more in a second. That are some die cuts by Zizix designed by Tim Holtz. They are called Silhouette Birds. They are relatively new, I think. Um, if I can find them on Amazon, I will link them down below for you. And in a second, I will also add some letters and some numbers those are also die cuts by Tim Holtz, but they are a little bit older. I don't know if I can find them, if they are still available, but if yes, I will link them down below for you as well, of course. And I really like to attach those tiny things. Um, the pockets and those belly bands, of course, are made to hold really tiny things. And I'm really enjoying playing with those tiny things. So I've added some... Um, tickets and some stickers and that stuff you will uh, see that in detail in the end of this video there i will show you uh what i have put inside of the single pockets and tuck spots and so on um, and that's also a great way of course to store some memories i mean if you uh were on holiday for example and after that you would create such a box wouldn't it be just great to put some photos or some tiny things that you found um, during your holiday inside of such a box? That's so cool. I mean, I've uh, put really random things from my stash inside here, but of course you can also exchange those things and use this birdhouse over and over again and put different things inside. Take them out, put something else in or use that for a very, very special um, storage of, of things or storage of special things. So that's what I want to say. Um, you could also hide some letters in this middle part. Um, as you can see here, Barbara's bird is on top of this uh, papers and everything that's below is hidden there. And that's for me a really interesting thing because, yeah, when you have this as a decorative element in your room, then no one would know what's inside. They can look, if you perhaps have some uh, guests or something like that, um, they could look at the birdhouse, but they wouldn't know what's inside. And that's for me a really special thing about this. So now I want to um, put some uh, more interest to the sides. Uh, I mean, the front and the back side of the house, there where you can see the pages of the journal. Because until now, it looks a little bit strange when the pages look uh, through this triangle. 
it looks not like a house until now. So I have cut two pieces of scrapbooking paper um, to make two journaling cards in this house shape. So um, yeah, I've measured that and then I've cut that into the right size and that now can um, be put behind this front and back door, I would say, uh, of this house. To um, bring the right color to them, I've also used some embossing glaze. I've chosen the paper in a similar color. You can see that in this turquoise. And then um, the this is, I guess, the speckled egg uh, embossing glaze. I'm not totally sure, sorry. But um, to get a similar look of this, of course, the base of the scrapbooking paper is important because the glaze is translucent and you would see the color underneath through it. Um, I've added some Tim Holtz wildflower stamps die, cut here, die cuts here to the these journaling cards. Um, if you want to glue your cards and you have embossing glaze on top of the card, please don't use a heat gun like I have done it here to make sure that you don't remelt your embossing glaze. I don't have another tool to dry something, so um, I've done that very carefully. It worked, but it's not such a good idea. <laughs> Okay, so now we uh, have to make a little collage here to the front and the back of the house. Uh, and I've used Barbara's birds here to have a really strong focal point. So uh, there's yellow bird and also the other one, one that I will put to the other side in a second come from Barbara's papers. And I really, really love these birds. And uh, when I saw those both birds, I knew the colors of my project. That was really interesting for me. Because from the very beginning, it was clear how this uh, color palette would look like. Really interesting experience for me. So here you can see me dec decorating the backside as well. Or you can see it <laughs> like you want it. Is this the front or the back? I don't know. <laughs> because, yeah, there is no really front or back. But I have to call it in some way. And I really, really like um, this contrast with the red. I think this makes it really artsy, really <sighs> some kind of modern and vintage at the same time. And I really like this combination with those Tim Holtz uh, numbers here. These die cuts are absolutely gorgeous because they have these different sizes and that makes those um, numbers really, really interesting when you put several of those uh, next to each other. Um, that looks really cool, I think. And yeah, this would be not my project if there would not be white gesso that I've splattered to, <laughs> to the collage. So here we go. Um, I've went a little bit crazy with the splattering around the whole house. I wanted it, yeah, as I said, a little bit artsy. I've also added two little um, embellishments to the roof so that it looks like, yeah, you know, this um, bird food that you put uh, outside for the birds in, in the winter time. <laughs> I wanted to imitate that. And now this whole thing looks like this. And I'm so proud of myself. I can't tell you that. This whole project took me approximately four days um, to finish that with all the drying times and all the thinking about how this could work that I'm so hoping that you like this and I'm hoping that this is new to you and that this is something that, yeah, that, that motivates you to create something like this for yourself or that you perhaps get a totally other idea out of this. Perhaps you see this and you think, ooh, birdhouse, nice, Louise, but I have a better idea. <laughs> that, of course, would also be really, really great. And if you have something similar to show me, um, something th similar like this that you've already seen, or something that you've created after watching this video, then please leave a comment um, and leave a link or something like that so that I can look at that because in the <laughs> in this moment I'm just like I want to know if if this is something yeah that can be interesting for for the junk journal world I mean this is not a junk journal but <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> okay so let's take a closer look at the single 
areas of this. Um, I have not filmed everything that I have done. So um, those single, uh, those last finishing touches I have not filmed um, because otherwise it would have been way too long. <clears throat> and yeah, now we have this. And I think also uh, when you look from far away, it looks so cool. This whole arrangement, this whole collage is for me a piece of art itself, even if it's only flat on the table. So here I'm showing you what I have put into my um, single pockets and tuck spots and so on. So as I said, I've add, added some stickers. So these um, stamp stickers, postage, postage stamp stickers, uh, come from the Your Creative Studio subscription box, I guess. And um, I've also added some really neutral things. So the next pocket there um, has uh, just a little tag and this, yeah, that's some kind of an index card because I wanted to have this balance between Barbara's papers that are more busy than my neutral ephemera is. And I want to have this balance between the neutral colors and this busyness. Is that a word? <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and I think when you need so many small pieces uh, that you can fill all of those pockets and tuck spots, it's also really relaxing to just um, coffee dye some neutral things, distress them, little stamping or just a little embellishment like here this postage stamp and the die cut the little stamp and you are finished and it looks really cool inside of this and of course I wanted to um, create some journaling space as well I mean for myself I need those decorative elements um, to get inspiration to uh, have a nice memory and that stuff but I also need some neutral pages to have the possibility to write something down and to do my actual journaling. And I think um, that's not only an optical thing, this balance between the neutral and the more busy things, but it's also, of course, um, for the process of working with this box, really helpful. This box, of course, is a decoration. When you put that into your shelf, you have a birdhouse in your room. But of course, I want to use this and I want to work with it and store my things in it. And I want to yeah, use it as an ephemera storage and as a place where I can keep my memories and journal something. Um, so here are some more of those postage stamp stickers, a little ticket. I don't know where I have that from. But I guess that could be from AliExpress, but I, I'm not totally sure. So I've also searched for some things that are in my stash forever. <laughs> That's also a great thing to use those things that are in your stash forever. forever. And I think you also have such things. <laughs> and especially those tiny things. Um, sometimes we have them, we collect them, we love to collect them, but to actually use them is a totally different thing i guess <laughs> and these are these postage stamps are also stickers so i thought to include stickers into these little pockets and tuck spots is not the baddest idea because um, when i want to fill my journaling cards i can also use those stickers to have a relatively easy job to decorate my journaling space so <clears throat> this uh Little strange thing here, don't know how I, how I want to call it, <laughs> has these three tiny tags. And then um, you could open it with this little uh, closure thingy da there. But you can also take um, the papers out like this. And I've put this bird from Barbara's papers on top as some kind of a cover. And behind that, I have some neutral papers, some empty papers. These rusty looking uh, pages are also from Barbara's shop, but I mixed that up with some book pages and some really random stuff that I could find that has the right size for this little folder thingy. Um, and as I said, you could also put um, things to this square that are a little bit higher because there's enough space um, from the bottom 
to the to the edge of the uh, pages of the journal, of course. So you could also uh, put <clears throat> some kind of a little really three-dimensional arrangement to the bottom of the box. You could store some uh, pens there, some, uh, don't know, things that are really bulky, I would say. And that's the reason why I have not attached this folder to the bottom of the box so that I can easily remove it. So here I am trying to show you, and that was so hard to film, <laughs> I'm trying to show you how this would look if you would, um, on the one hand, close it so that you can see the single uh, perspectives of this uh, whole thing. And you could also, of course, um, leave it open in some way. You could um, place it into your shelf as a decoration, for example, like this. Put the journal on top as the roof and leave it like it is so that you can look inside of the house. That would also be, of course, possible. Um, I've also added some uh, of those die cut numbers to the other both sides so that this is cohesive and that the four sides of this little house look, uh, yeah, a little bit matchy matchy. And you can, of course, also decorate these um, sides that you can flip uh, from the other side. But I think you got that. So this is the look from the inside. I really love that, that you can look into this room, into this bird room that looks so cool. You could also put some tiny furniture or something like that <laughs> into this little house. That would be really awesome, I think, but I don't have such things in my stash. And if you want to um, bring the roof back, you have, of course, uh, to put the journaling cards um, into the right position first so that you can easily handle that. So just place the two cards here like this. They um, are hold with the help of the magnets as well. And then you can just take the journal. Uh, I will show you the journal uh, a little bit closer here. Um, and later on, we can put that back as the roof. So here I've made these little dangles and I really like how they look uh, when you have the journal in your hand. I mean, now it's a journal and it's not a roof, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so for the inside of this journal, I've decided to go with really empty pages, as you can see. I've imitated some rust on the back sides of the printables that I have from Barbara's shop. She has the rust on the front side, this rusty fabric pieces. And um, I've tried to get similar colors to the back side of the printables uh, because I haven't printed anything to the back sides. I wanted to play around with inks and with sprays a little bit. Um, and yeah, since the effort for the rest of the project was relatively massive, I've decided that I want to... Um, to have no decoration here at this point. Of course, I will decorate and fill this journal in the future, but at this point I was happy just to have a bulky journal that I can put as my roof here to the birdhouse. And um, the bulkiness of the journal is really, really important, I think, for the look of this birdhouse, because now through um, the little holes you can see the pages and with more embellishments, you, um, of course, will see that way better, this really cool look that you can see the pages through the little holes. Okay, so that's it from here for now. I hope you like this. Leave a comment what you think about this. Stay creative and see you the next time. Bye-bye.